Okay, take two. Picking up where we left off. Um, you need a buffer zone because if not, uh, Iraq will fall to the BRICS and so will Syria eventually because they're friendly with the Russians. Uh, Western Europe and the United States cannot take that chance, especially France. So, since you had such a success with uh, Libya and taking out Gaddafi, you think you can do the same thing with Assad. All you need is to go to the UN and apply for a no-fly zone, take out Assad's uh, defenses, fly cover for the rebels, and b b bam, boom, three months, Assad is gone, and you have what you need. You have a buffer zone between the BRICS and the rest of the Middle East and Europe. There's just one problem. You can't do it a second time. Assad is not Gaddafi. Gaddafi was a polarizing figure. He wanted to unify Africa so that um, it would be a lot harder for uh, the West and the Russians and the Chinese to come in and do business because now you have a, you know, 54 African countries that are unified and talking as one voice and you're going to get a better deal for your resources. It's going to be harder to do business. So Gaddafi was unpopular by both sides. So it was easy to get a no-fly zone. It was easy to allow him to be taken out. Why it's hard to do it the second time, if you're doing business with a country and you're signing contracts and that country gets bombed by the other side and you don't protect them, guess what? Nobody wants to do business with you. Nobody wants to be Gaddafi. So if you allowed it once, you cannot, you cannot, cannot allow it a second time. So when they tried to do uh, a repeat of Libya, the BRICS came in and they blocked it. They tried to force their, their way in by threatening to uh, bomb uh, Assad directly and the Russians step in and tell the West and the United States, if you want to start World War III, I'm willing to go there with you because we're drawing a line in the sand with Syria. Putin comes in, brings in, uh, uh, anties up his, his missile ships, the United States and the West back down. Now, why they go after him in Ukraine, because they want to take away his, his uh, warm sea port in Crimea, which he thwarts. They're left with this quagmire, so they, they, they can't uh, arm the rebels directly, which is illegal. They do that uh, illegally through Christopher I think it was not Christopher Smith. Uh, what was his name? Can't remember the. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the the, the uh, ambassador's name in Benghazi. They got killed. Who was doing basically uh, gun running, uh, transferring all of Gaddafi's stockpile of weapons to those uh, rebels and those people in ISIS to actually provide that buffer zone that the West actually, that actually needs. So this goes on for what three years and you basically you have a quagmire you have a standstill between Assad's forces and ISIS and um, and the rebels so Assad decides to throw a th uh, throw a Hail Mary to uh, Putin after the United States the United States uh, uh, comes in and says the United States and France comes in and said they're going to defend the rebels against ISIS and they're going to start bombing runs. That opens the door for uh, Assad to ask for help for Putin, from Putin, which he does. Putin comes in and gives aid to the legitimate government of Syria. And for the next 30, 40 days, he comes in and he starts cleaning up those fake rebels, th those fake uh, rebels and those fake uh, terrorists in in Syria and in Iraq or ISIS. Now, the, U the U.S. and the Russians actually start coming in direct contact and nobody wants World War III. So the jig is up. To look good in front of the rest of the world, you guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to betray your allies. You have to betray the people that are actually going down there and doing business for you on the ground. Betrayal is not 
very welcome amongst Arabs. You're going to get blowback. First, you get a train attack and now you get a direct bombing. And I'm not saying, you know, for the conspiracy folks out there, I'm not saying that that France had a hand in this in these bombings or in this, these attacks. I'm not saying that I, I, I tend to doubt it. I really tend to doubt it. They may have, but I tend to doubt it. I think it's, this is blowback for betraying the people that you sent down there to provide your buffer zone. That you were that you though your rebels that you were paying in your army. Now you're bombing them. Arabs don't take betrayal lightly. So now the French are, are cleaning up their mess. The United States and the French are cleaning up their mess because now ISIS, which was a viable solution to a, a sticky problem, now becomes an embarrassment. And I'm not saying there aren't uh, ISIL terrorists in, uh, in France. There's a lot of them because you've imported a lot of uh, Muslims over the past uh, 15 years or 20 years to bolster your flagging population. Most of the gains in, in uh, France's population to keep the population stable are Muslim, Muslim and African. Uh, they don't even uh, print birth rates. Uh, they don't even print birth rates for white Anglo, I'm saying Anglo, but, but white French, white European French women. They don't even print them. They don't even want you to know. All they want you to know is that your birth rate is stable. But 40, well, the last I heard, it was at least 40 or 45 percent of all new births were Muslim or uh, foreigners. So this is just blowback from your policies. Now, I, my heart goes out to all the French people that are just pawns in this particular game because this is what your government has to do if uh, if France can't hold Africa, if France can't hold the Middle East, guess what? All those social policies will actually evaporate. And France has one of the most generous social policies in all of Europe. And if France can't extract that wealth from elsewhere to supplement these social policies, they're going to have riots in the streets. They have riots in the streets. France has a possibility of collapsing like it's done before. France collapses, the whole EU goes. That's something that Europe cannot afford. So this is my take. I'm not, I can't go into a lot of detail because we don't have enough time, but I hope this gives you an overview and something to think about. I know I'm going to get a lot of um, I'm full of shit comments in the, in the comment section. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, Spray my uh, stro my troll repellent. I'm going to put on my flame suit and uh, I'm going to uh, put up my bullshit deflectors because I know it's coming. But this is for you, bro. Uh, give you something to think about. Look up this stuff in uh, on Google. You know, you'll find a lot of this stuff. Uh, most of the uh, supporting evidence I can't give because uh, one, it's part of my group. Uh, two, it's a. Uh, kind of detailed and kind of long, man. I'd have to have a whole channel just to detail this crap. And uh, this is a MGTOW channel, and I don't really feel like uh, doing this. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for, you know, the last 13 years. I don't want to do this stuff, uh, to recount this stuff anymore. So anyway, hope this helps. Ciao.